Yes, I'm going to walk Oh, that will keep my way Oh, child, some of these days Well, I'm going to walk that milky white way for oh, some of these days. Well, 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 I'm going to walk up and take up my stand. Going to join that Christian band. I'm going to walk. Whoa, that milky white way. Oh, Lord, some of these days. I'm gonna tell my, oh, my mother, howdy, 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 when I get home. Yes, I'm going to tell my, my mother, howdy. When I get home, well, 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 I want to tell my, my mother, hey, when I shake mother hand that day, that's when I walk, whoa, that milky white way, some of these days. I want to meet God the Father and God the Son. Yes, I want to meet God the Father, God the Son. Praise him who 
is the help of my countenance and my God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help and joy. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not go. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thou stand, thou comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, findeth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the truth, the way and the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But I would have you to be not ignorant concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the crowd to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. These things I have spoken unto you, that it might me he might have peace. In the world you should have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, do it not get up here what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall all see him as he is. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them 
and trust in Him. Blessed are they that mourn, for they will be comforted. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Now I'm mine. When I pass it through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corrupt. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is our sting? O grave, where is our victory? The sting of death is sin, and the sting and the strength of sin is the Lord. But thanks be to God, who has given up the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. Comfort us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed me, though he were dead, yet shall live. For me to live in Christ and for me to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my life. Yet what I shall choose, I will not. For I am in a straight between two, having a desire to depart and to be required, which is far better. God is 
our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of this sea.
and my salvation. O Seraphim, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter days upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. Let me have this. God, we thank you this morning, this afternoon, God, how you bless us, God, that Jesus is. God, right now, we thank you, God, for showing your power once again here in this earth. Because no man can do what you do with God. We ask you right now, God, for your, for your strength. God, strengthen it for me, family, this day, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And days to come, God, when they uh, remember us, go back, God, for time, the good time to spend here with Father, brother, amen. Script of God at that time. God gave him a script of God out of weakness in the mighty name of Jesus. God, have your way in the service go forth this morning, God. God, let us, God, let us come. We come to celebrate the home going service of my brother, Mark Wayne State. And we think of all that you've done, God. How you keeping us, God. We thank you, God, for the one that are healed. Bless us right now, God. Have thy way to take off. Bless the speaker as you go forth, God. See it with the power. See it with the anointing, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to him. And we will hear. Bless us, God, and we will see. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So much the glory to his name. Glory to his name. For the Spirit of the Lord is as liberty. Amen. Amen. That would be coming from the book of Isaiah. Amen. The 41st chapter and the 10th verse. I tell you, God been good back then. And God been good since then. Amen. 41 and 10. Fear thy not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness, said the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord and God, home for celebration. We come to celebrate this man of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to be reading praise the Lord for 2 Timothy 4. Praise the Lord. 6 and 6 to 8. Glory to God. I thought about Uncle Mike. Glory to God. And I thought about the arm service. Glory to God. You know when you're in the home service and soldiers get ready to go home, they have this thing called ETS. Mm -hmm. 
expiration terminal of service. That's when your service is over. You completed your job. Glory to God. So here's what Paul said. For I am ready. Glory to God. Being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my race. I have kept the faith. Glory to God. Finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. For the Lord God will give me at that day. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But not only to me, glory to God, but also to the one, glory to God, that love his appearance. Praise the Lord.
going to go. Who I don't see no time limit on here. All right. Because of what they did for me and others in my family. Mm -hmm. My grandmother told me that you don't have to wear a suit to be the sharpest man in the room. Hey. Right. 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 She said that real men don't leave home without money in their pockets. Amen. Why she was putting money in my pocket. Come on. Yes. And to this day, I still believe in that. Yes, my Aunt Ruth, she didn't give me the opportunity to get it wrong. I thought I was special, but she knew I was special. Mm -hmm. So she would do things or give me tasks to do that five or six year olds could not do. But she didn't give me the opportunity to fail. And because of that, no matter the task that I'm always up against, I'm always successful. Yes. Yes. Now it brings me to my uncle. He was my definition of how a man should look Amen. and how a man should be at my earliest memories of wanting to be a man. He gave me my affinity, my love for nice watches. And I have a box full of nice watches. But what I got from my uncle is, he's easy. He's not pouring what he thinks on you. He's not pouring how he lives on you. He's modeling what he thinks is the best for you. My uncle reminds me not of a politician because politicians sort of have to take care of everybody, straddle the fence. But he reminds me of a statesman and a statesman's take care of his own. They are captains, and we lose them. We have lost a captain in this family. The men are lieutenants. The people that take up the responsibility after the leader is gone. Now, I can't do it by myself, and I refuse to, because I have Ken, because I have Mike Jr., because I have Shamika, because I have I, I have Tammy, all of us are reflections of what this man put in us. Mm. My uncle had a 30 minute lunch break, mm. but would come home from a 30 minute lunch break across town and fixed us lunch every day. Every day. Y'all didn't just hear that. Wow. Every day. He fixed us oh, lunch sir. every day. Oh. That's huge to me. Would go over my homework with me before he went to work. And for some reason, y'all, I thought you spelled cat with a K. <laughs> and I couldn't get that right, and I would get a whooping every time. I got the 19 out of 20 words correct. But I couldn't get cat correct. And, and, and Uncle Mike didn't like that too, uh, too much. I've had over 150 thoughts of what I will speak on as it pertains to this young man, this captain, this general that lays in this 
is a casket. But the thought that comes to me is my uncle never put a lot of emphasis on <coughs> material things. Mm. His emphasis was just on love. Come Those on. of you who know that Michael loved you, you Amen. never second guessed that. Amen. And that was the greatest asset that I got. And it dawned on me the same things that my grandmother put in me. Mm. My uncle put in me was the same thing that they put in Uncle Mike. Uh -huh. I'm easy, y'all. Mm. I'm, I'm easy. I don't pull what I do on the wall. But I love hard. And I don't want a member in my family to feel that you are in this thing alone, Uncle Billy. I'm saying, Mama, Auntie Louise, we got you. Not because we had this bright idea to have you. It was because of what he instilled in us. Little man told me when we were coming in, he was like, the only thing Uncle Mike wanted us to do is love family. And, any, and anybody that knows this family right here, we're like this. Mm. And we don't care about what your definition is of, of how we love. Because it's a definition never moves. Mm -hmm. There is life in the love of the Staley family. Yes. There is life in the love of the Finn family. Yes. I'm honored to be up here, Keontae. I'm a poop. Thumbs up. So, thumbs up. The mic. Thumbs up. I'm excited about this next chapter. Because if it's my time, I can't run from it. Mm. We cannot and will not take days off of supporting each other and loving each other. Yeah, he did not. That's right. That's right. So I'm ready. That's right. Now you see dress shoes when you look at me. But I got track shoes on. I got working boots on. Because I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. And in that, know what I'm supposed to do. The pain is starting to ease. It's starting to go away, and it's, it's being replaced with happiness. Pastor, I don't know the specific scripture, but I know it goes, I don't know where it's from. I know the scripture, and I'm paraphrasing it. We cry and hurt on the day of birth, right? But when they leave us, we celebrate. Yeah. Because the physical body yeah. stays, yes. but the soul goes back to its original creator. Yeah. So it, so in my thought, I have no reason to be down or regulate my uncle to just this day. Because at this point, he's doing better than we are. Yes. 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 And that is yes. I mean this with every fiber in my body. Yes. If you need me, hey. and I can perform, I got you. I can't do it by myself, I'll find a team. And we'll make this thing good. Thank you all for coming out, supporting our family. Uh, I can't say enough words to see some of my family members in this place today and to see my mom still holding on. Amen. I got you. And Super Mom, I got you. Hey, Moon, you will let me call. I got you. My teeth, you inherited the whole family. You never be by yourself. When you go back to that house, you know how these phones are. We can FaceTime. You want to see somebody that look like a fed man or a stable man? You got a lot of these guys in here. There's a lot of women here that support. Thank you for allowing us to love him even when, when we were overbearing about our uncle. We wanted to talk to him. We wanted to sing. And he didn't exchange words with us. I'm appreciative and I'm honored. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.
Amen. Bless the Lord. Is Dr. Moore here? Again? All right. Next, um, Joseph C. May. soldier, one must follow the instructions of Paul to be strong and to endure hardness. The hardness for you on that day was to remain on this earth for your family or go home to heaven to be with the Lord. We knew you were tired on that day, Dad. Being able to hear you say, look at all these people in white surrounding me. Let us know, let us know you were surrounded by angels. I told you then, Dad, take your rest. We'll be fine. Although a part of me wanted to selfishly keep you here with me, I knew your time here was ending. My heart will always ache from your absence, but the memories we made are etched deeply into my soul, strengthening me for difficult times. I will always remember the time you came to get me from off the side of the road and fix my car so that the baby would be safe. How you encouraged me that life lessons aren't made to kill me, they are created to make me stronger. How no matter what I want to be in life, always give it 200%. Even if I chose to be a janitor, be the best janitor in the building. You also told me to never be judgmental. You would say, we all have a past that doesn't define us in life, but gives us the scars to become a better person. You also taught me that it doesn't matter where you're going, dress to impress and be the sharpest knife in the draw. You said you can look like a million dollars without a dime in your pocket. Finally, you taught me to give a person a second chance, but don't let anyone take advantage of you. I love you, and one day I will see you again. 
I know mother and granddaddy are happy to have their baby boy home in the pearly gates of heaven. Love you forever, daddy baby. Good evening. Good evening. To the pool pit, family, and the rest of the body of Christ. First of all, I want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. One word come to my mind, and there's a scripture that says that there's a friend that's thicker closer than a brother. Growing up, I grew up with childhood friends, and we played, we fought, and we played. And some of them gone on home. But I never really knew what a true friend was. To one day at Tyson, Mr. Stater walked in. And he had one of those walk you would never, ever forget. <laughs> and he would come in with that tool bag on his side, and. So I was like, kind of like a little lead man back there in the area that I was working in. 
came to him and said, something about this guy here. Mm -hmm. And we began to talk. We befriended each other. And man, there would come time when I looked down the hall and I didn't see that bag and I didn't see that walk. I said, like, oh, man. Because we laughed and we made our day, our night, rather, mm -hmm. a pleasant night. No matter what went on, what you know, machine broke down, I went to it, state went to it. If a machine broke down and the state went to it, I went to it. Right. And when we take our lunch hours, we would take our lunch hours together. All but the time he had to go back home. Because his wife had cooked. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the time he uh, he always loved, let you know he loved his family. Mm -hmm. He talked about all his kids, his grandkids, mm -hmm. and his sisters. He can't nobody cook cakes and pies like his family. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him one day about. I said, well, stay with us. I'm going to go home and eat with you. No, buddy. <laughs> but he didn't mean that because he turned around and brought me something back from home to eat. And he had a heart that would just continuously give and give. And even while he was sick, I was doing some work at my home. He said, Joseph, uh, I tell you, I, I, I come up there and I put that door in for you. I was going to stay there, how much, uh, how much you going to charge me? Oh, you ain't got to worry about that. I got some stuff I want you to do. <laughs> I said, okay. So even while he was sick, stayed up, getting that pickup truck, and I, I hear it coming up the road. Mm -hmm. I'm riding and pulling my yard. Mm -hmm. And I leave him at the house, and he worked until he completed that job. And that was one day I remember he said, Joe, I really don't feel well today. I said, okay, stay now. I said, well, man, don't worry about it. Sit down. We, 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 we good. We good. And he eased on back down the road. And I tell you, it got to where I started missing him more. And then they changed shift on us, and we was on a different shift. But I looked forward to every Wednesday where I could sing before I go to work. And then on top of that, we talked mostly every day. The one thing he said about the, this young lady sitting right here, he said, Joseph, I got a plus. Mm -hmm. I ain't just got a Y, he said, I got a plus. Mm -hmm. I said, a plus, what you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Plus she could. <laughs> <laughs> plus she gonna argue with me and make sure I do right. What I want, don't want to do right by myself. So she gonna make sure. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing about state. He always was never, never ever afraid to tell me or anyone else what was right. Mm -hmm. And I thank him for being my friend. Mm -hmm. Us. 
but he added a little bit to mine. I'm Papa First Lady. Uh -huh. So he never ceased to call me that. And I was just like, you Uncle Mike, you don't have to call me First Lady. You my First Lady. And it was odd, the relationship being like set over him and him under me. Not really, because he was always over me and me under him. I thank God for this man of God.
See, one thing y'all might have didn't know about my uncle, he was a worshiper. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he knew how to get in the presence of God. And I'm just grateful, hallelujah, that God gave me the opportunity to be his niece. Hallelujah. To be his smoker, baby. Hallelujah. Um, we love you. And we thank God for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Told more than what we want to hear. 
that the uncle you wish was in somebody else's family. Catch that one after a while. You know, we got folk that we wish we could trade out. You know, but they family now. Yeah. So we deal with them. Yeah. yeah. And we all got one. We all got two. Maybe three or four. So it is good to be a part of a family. Whether you want to be there or not, mm -hmm. you still need someone or somebody to talk to. Yeah. You know, you and your brother may have fought all those years. Mm -hmm. Now you're the best of friends. Mm -hmm. So the house apart. Fine. Mm -hmm. So death has a way of bringing us together and making us forget about the pain in some cases. We, we come together and we start reminiscing about how it used to be and what it used to be like. You know, you remember I was sitting and talking to one of the nephews and he was saying how things used to be, how there was a meat market here, and I was talking to somebody about penny wheel cookies. They were talking over my head, amen? Amen, penny cookies, I never experienced the penny cookies, amen? And so, they were talking about the pain. Then that we need each other. Whether you think you need me or not, you still need me. Because, I, and I, I, I say this to the children, uh, you ought to praise God because look how long you have. I found out that you really don't know your parents until you get out of the house. And then you need them. Because growing up, they took care of you. They were responsible for you. And you got it on your own. You missed all of that. And so you build your relationship with your parents. After high school. After college, we get to know who our parents are. And, I, and I'm envious and I'm jealous. And I lost my parents at an early age. Yes. If you're 40 and 50 and you still have your parents, Come you on. ought to be excited up in here. Yes, God, I saw a lady was in her 70s and her mama was still living. Yes. You ought to be thankful for the time that you already had. And for those of you that still have them, you ought to be more excited yeah. that God allowed you to build a relationship with him. Yeah. I dare you tell your mama, I wish you were my mama. Yeah. You tell your daddy, I wish you weren't my dad. Boy. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> and so in our scripture today, I just want to encourage you, and then I'll be finished. I want to encourage you with a few words from Apostle Paul. He went and he was teaching the churches and he was and in the book of Thessalonians and he was teaching them and there were people in the church that had lost love for them. So Paul knew that it was his duty to encourage those in the church. He wanted to encourage them because a lot of them were grieving in the church. 
because sometimes it can be hard to overcome death. People say, uh, time heals all wounds. I make the difference. I still get my hand. Amen. And so he had to minister to them. And he had to talk to them about what to expect because so many of them were down and out. And so he said in verse 13 of Thessalonians, I've already read to you, he said, I would have you not to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Paul said that our reaction to death should be different from those in the world. He said that we, 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 there is a natural and a supernatural response to death. All right, stay with me. He said there is a natural and a supernatural response to death. You wonder what my thought is. Stay in the race. Stay in the race. He, he, he did not tell us not to mourn because he understands that we are in the flesh. And when you are in the flesh, you are going to naturally mourn. But Psalms 116 and 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Hebrew word for precious refers to a precious stone or our possessions. It can also be translated as costly and expensive. The Lord does his work through us here on earth, and he has chose people, he has chose Uncle Mike to do a great work. So of course, when we lost him, he grieved also. Because he lost a warrior down here on earth. And so the Bible said he was precious unto him. He was valuable unto him. All of our Christians that are in the house today, you are a valuable asset to the Lord. And when we die, we become, we, we are like a precious stone that he has lost. So he didn't tell us not to mourn because we are in the natural and we are in the flesh. He said, but as a soldier that has hope in him, we are to respond supernaturally. Paul explained that we are to react differently because we don't act like the ones that don't have no hope. We mourn and grieve. The Lord is with us through it all. But as believers, we have confidence and hope in the future. We don't live in the now. We know that our departed loved ones who, who have gone on, we shall see again. So that should give us joy in the midst of our sorrow. Yeah. You ought to have joy in the midst of your, in our sorrows. I heard the testimonies of how Uncle Mike did this and how Uncle Mike did this and then you were driving down the road and you heard clink, clink in your car. You called Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike was everybody in yeah. If your plumbing bucks, yeah. we called Uncle Mike. Because yeah. Uncle Mike was the plumber in the van. Yes, yes, if your roof was leaking, yeah. we called Uncle Mike in the van. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If your wash machine tore up, Uncle Mike in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle Mike was our all in all. Yes, we didn't need no extra insurance. Because we had Uncle Mike. Yeah. 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 So we ought to rejoice. And Lord, listen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 says, 
We are confident ourselves and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Even scripture even called our loved one blessed. And I heard a voice from heaven say unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from his foot. They said the spirit that they may rest from their labor yes. and their works do follow them. Yes. Revelation 14 and 13. Uh -huh. Verse 14 and set to 17 in our scripture, Paul reminds us that if we believe in the gospel, we believe in the second coming. Uh -huh. No topic is more comforting to us today that for those that have lost someone than the resurrection. We must anticipate the future when we face death. Because this is not the end. Oh, I have to some of you. Those of us that have hope, we understand that those things are one of these no more. Yeah, yeah. Verse 14 to 15 said, when Christ returns, he will bring the deceased believers with him. While we grieve for the lost, surely they rejoice and anticipate the day when they will be first to see the resurrected Christ return for his people. How do they get to be first, Pastor? The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us that remain shall be caught up by myself. That's all. Yeah. I will stop by myself. Amen. Yeah. Ooh, so, so Paul, the Apostle Paul had to teach them that you can rejoice when you lose the loved one. Because this is not the end. Even though you face persecution, and even though you go through, that's all Uncle Mike was trying to tell his children and all of us when he was giving us all of these little things that he was telling us, he was trying to tell us to stay in the rain. Ah, he was trying to tell us, don't you give up and be the right. They called me, my wife called me, she said, Uncle Mike, uh, is uh, uh, with diagnosed with cancer and uh, he's getting ready to go through chemo. You need to call. Him. And I called him. And I called the mic. They said you have been down and, and you're going through chemo. He said, Yeah, I, I've, I've had my first treatment. I said, I know you're home resting. He said, No, nah, nephew. <laughs> Not at <bad> work. <laughs> <laughs> I said, How you at work? You just did chemo. So she called me a second time, and she said, uh, it's not looking good. I was like, I uh, had to just keep on, he came home, he wasn't feeling well. I said, let me call him. I was like, how you doing so much? So I heard they came with chemo treatment, so much, so on. How you doing? That's you. I'm at work. <laughs> Stay in the ring. The same same thing did the fourth time. I called my little Mike. How you doing? He said, nephew, I'm in the hospital. I don't feel well, but I'm not going to give up. I said, you're not going to give up, then I'm going to keep praying for God to raise you up. Because I know he's able to raise him up. But like the three Hebrew boys said, if he don't, bring me out. Y'all look up here, man. If he don't bring us out the fire this time, I know he's angry. Oh, y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ain't never been through nothing. Ah, but you ain't up in here to call on the name of the Lord, and it seemed like you wouldn't come in the house. He's angry. Paul had to go down 
and he was talking uh, 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 over Timothy, over in 2 Timothy. Somebody read this scripture, I believe. Over in 2 Timothy. Paul went down there because Timothy was becoming discouraged in the race. And he said, Timothy, I came to encourage you to stay in the fight. Yeah. He said, I know you're being persecuted. And I know you want to give up in this race. He said, but I, we need you to stay in there. Yeah. And Paul said, I'm getting old. Yeah. And we're going to need somebody to continue to fight. Yeah. Well, Brother Harvey, that all the artist has already said <laughs> that somebody is going to have to stay in the race. Somebody. Yes. Somebody's going to have to step up. And run the race. Yeah. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to give up because I know he was a pioneer in the family. Cool cat. I believe I might have had every color jacket in the book. But when he went through, he knew how to stay in the race. He didn't give up. He said, the Lord don't bring me out. I know he's able. Yeah. I know he's able to do it. Yeah. Uh, so Paul, yeah. Paul had to talk to Timothy. Y'all want me to go, so I'm going to let you go. Yeah. And to tell Timothy, you got to stay in this room. Yeah. I heard somebody already read it, and I go to my seat and said, but watch thou. First chapter Timothy 4, 5 through 8. But watch thou in all things, yeah. enduring affliction. Yeah. Do the work of an evangelist, make yeah. full proof of the ministry. Paul says, for I am, not, for I am ready to be offered. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the time of my departure is at hand. Then yeah. he said, in verse 7, I have fought yes, a good fight. I have finished my course. He said, I have kept the faith. Here's for This is what we ought to rejoice when it comes to death. Here's for There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I got a crown in heaven. I know, I know, I know we will sad, but uh, uh, he's doing better than we are. His soul is resting. He's not in any pain anymore. He fought a good fight. He finished his goal. Oh, y'all ain't here today. So now he's getting ready to be fit for his crime. They tell me up in heaven, we got a long white bro prepared for us. When we get up in heaven, and we've been crowned, and we put on our robe, we get caught up in the night. Come on. Come on. The John says, no man can count. And we can walk around heaven, shout, hold it, hold it, hold it. The Lord God Almighty, hold it. Yeah. I want to see all the money. Yeah. I want to see my mother. Yeah. I want to see my daddy. Yeah. I want to see my sisters. Yeah. But most of all, yeah. I want to see Jesus. Yeah. And I, when I get to heaven and I can see my Lord and Savior, I'm going to tell them thank you. Y'all don't hear me. Thank you for keeping me yeah. when I didn't have a mom. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for keeping me yeah. when I didn't have a father. Yeah. Oh, thank you yeah. for keeping me yeah. when I wanted to end the race. Yeah. When I stayed in the race. Yeah. Where my crown? Yeah. Where's my room? Yeah. I'm ready now. Y'all yeah. don't hear me. Your reward is greater than heaven. I know we 
we miss it. I know we miss it. But he's doing much better than we do. You got to go back home to all your sickness and to all your pain. All the bills, all the stuff you left at home for you came here, you got to go right back to it. But his soul is resting.
Rhonda Hamilton Holmes. Wendy Vincent with the Ark of God Ministries, Pastor David Johnson and Cynthia Johnson. You are in our thoughts and prayers, Tricia and Gary Teasdale. From Sean and Geraldine Putman, your neighbor. With deep sympathy for your loss from your class of 1971. Charmika Overstreet sending our deepest sympathy, Love Gamma Pi Omega, Chapter 888. You are in our thoughts and prayers. We love you from, from the class of 1994. Bud Lee, Tylena, Roderick, Ebony, and Vodrick. With the sympathy from Chris County High, JROTC. With the sympathy, Bishop Joel, Joel Ridley, and the Body of Christ family. Thinking of you and wishing you comfort Bishop Joel Ridley and Mother Ridley in the Body of Christ ministry. With the sympathy, love Tabitha Harold Harris. With the sympathy from Evelyn and Raymond. The family father is giving loving memory of a loving and caring husband, father, brother, uncle, from the family. In the memory of Dr. Holy Williams, Deacon Arthur L. Parker, CEO and President, along with staff of J.W. Williams Funeral Home, is pleased to present this family, an African American family and a revival, in the hope that it will serve as a source of adding comfort and peace in the days to come. We are also pleased to present this family and pay to our tribute of your loved one's life. It is our prayer that you will forever remember the many cherished memories you shared as a family. And Thank you. 